Now, one of the ways I'm considering dealing with this hive is my method of separating each of these boxes and moving them away from this hive, putting a top on it, taking the box away, and dealing with it maybe in this room on the table we used last night on live stream. This might be a way for me to search for the queen without having to keep the hive open. But again, with this storm coming in, I have a lot of expensive camera gear out here. When it starts to rain, I've got my camera inside. So we're gonna take a look and see what it's gonna to take to get the job done. But I'm hoping that I can inspect this super first, find the queen in there, and then cage her, put her back in the hive temporarily till I have the passing of the storms to deal with the swarm cells. But the other problem I have facing me today is it's extremely windy. And I have thunderstorms west of me that are moving this direction pretty rapidly. And I just can't afford to waste any more time waiting to deal with this uh, hive that's ready to swarm. But with the high winds right now and the incoming storms, it's going to be a crapshoot whether or not I can get in there, find the queen, and begin to make some swarm control methods in place before the storm hits. If I don't do it today, they're gonna swarm as soon as these storms pass. Propolis does grab these lids pretty tight. If you wait for the weather to do stuff, I don't think you'll ever get anything done. You know, I could wait around until I got a better day, but that's what the bees are waiting on. <laughs> they're waiting around for a better day to swarm. So they're, my, the better day is gonna be good for them and bad for me all the, right, all the way around. So we need to get in there and get this queen caged. All right, so we'll put this on there in case the storm is violent. I'm gonna set another deep box here so that as I work these supers, I can put them over here to keep the queen away from going around and, and moving off onto another frame. That, that'd be a big help. I'm gonna try to use as little smoke as possible, but, and that's for a couple of reasons. Number one, I'm inside of a building. I don't want a spark flying somewhere. But secondly, I don't want to send the queen running around with the smoke, but we'll see. Again, the queen may not even be in the super, but we got we got to look, you know. That's the first thing we need to do. Move along, little bee. All right, so here we go. This one is usually not queen material frames. The queen usually isn't all the way against the wall like this. But we're going to look at every frame before we make that decision. Oh, that's just a nice frame of capped over honey. Look at that. Again, the queen could be there. There's a big drone right there in the middle. Look at that big drone. Capped over on both sides, really full. Let's park it over here temporarily just to hold it. Let's keep in our mind that we don't know for sure if the queen is on that frame, but we're probably 99% sure she's not there because it's no place for her to lay. So as we go across closer to the center, of this box, we'll get more into where the queen usually would be laying brood. So again, we've got the hive closed up, which is kind of nice because that doesn't, that keeps a lot of bees from flying up out of the hive. We only have these bees right here to contend with, and it's not too bad. All right, we have nectar, and we have some brood here, and a lot of drone brood on the bottom. We also need to make note of any queen cells as well. We need to keep track of that. So let's all look for the queen. I'm not seeing the queen. Let's take a look on this side. Capped over honey with some drones walking around, big drones. Those aren't the queens. Those are drones right there. Male drones. If you're new to beekeeping, thanks for joining my channel. Appreciate it. But um, you might be new to understanding what bees are and male uh, the male drone or the female workers and the one single queen that's walking around anybody see the queen now my camera is inside this room 
So it has started to sprinkle a little bit outside. So that way I don't have to worry about my camera being left out in the rain. Uh, this is a good idea. You know, we keep doing the same beekeeping practices over and over. Working a hive a traditional way. But look how I'm working it now. I've got the hive closed up and I'm looking at one box at a time in a shed. I mean, even if it wasn't raining, this isn't a bad idea. All right, here's a frame of drone brood. If you can see, I'll move some bees out of your way here, but you can see these, this is um, larger size cells sticking up, it's not smooth. All hives have about 200 to 2000 drones this time of the year, because these drones need to mate with virgin queens from other hives. They won't mate with a virgin queen from this hive, but they will mate with virgin queens from other hives. So it's unlikely we'd see a queen here just because, um, I mean, she has to lay these eggs, sure, but I usually don't find her on a frame like this, but it's possible. So let's keep a good eye out on her, keep looking good. Nectar dripping out. Look at the nectar that dripped out of those frames. Nectar from the nectaries of flowers is really wet and runny. It can be as much as 80% moisture, uh, water. So the bees dry it down. That's why some of the nectar is dripping out. It's just so liquidy. It's not honey yet. So when I, when I turn it on its side, some of the nectar will drip out. What we're doing again is trying to find our queen. Carefully looking. Boy, wouldn't, be, wouldn't we be excited if she was up in this super because it would be so easy to earn, to, uh, it'd be so easy to kind of resolve our swarm threat if we could cage our queen. I'd say there's a queen cell there, queen cell there, and a queen cell over here. So we're getting the threat of swarm cells up in the super. Now some of these are drone, look at that big drone cell that's punched out. That's crazy, but that is still horizontal. It's not vertically up and down. Queen cells have to be vertical. Worker cells, horizontal. Drone cells, horizontal. Queen cells are vertical. Yep, there are definitely queen cups. There's a queen cup here, but there's nothing in it. It's not charged. A word that we often refer to when we see larvae, royal jelly, we say a queen cell is charged. All right, so we're getting in the middle now. We're running, uh, every time we pick up a frame and don't see the queen, the odds are working against us, right? That's the thing about beekeeping, you know, when you've got a, a, an agenda of finding the queen and you're working a hive, if you're like me, I've got a lot of things, other things I have to do today. I just can't sit here and spend, you know, five, six hours trying to find the queen or I'll lose out on making videos for you guys, responding to comments, answering B Team 6 questions, because maybe I would spend six hours here. So there's only so much time that we can usually dedicate for finding the queen like this. But in my case, I love this hive so much, I love the queen so much, I don't want her to swarm into the trees. Again, we have swarm cells. Some of those uh, look charged to me, but I'm not really Right now, I'm just looking for the queen. Let's put it that way. I will deal with the queen cells later, but I need to deal with the queen now. Now, if we don't find the queen in this super, then what we're gonna do is actually set it aside without putting it on the hive. We'll set it aside. I don't wanna hurt these bees, but they're in my way. Uh, we'll set it off to the side. We'll find some place nice to park it temporarily and then we'll actually just lift off the next deep and bring it in here. It's gonna be interesting, isn't it, how this is gonna unfold. This is a mystery. Some beekeeping videos, um, some, some YouTube videos are very intriguing. You know, that's what content creators do. They try to make intriguing videos. Clickbait almost, but we're not, I'm not clickbaiting you. I need to find my queen. We're in a desperate situation. I don't want this queen to leave. 
a swarm is about 40,000, well, half of 40,000, about 20,000 bees that leaves with the, the queen that has been in here for a while. And then they raise virgin queens to replace her. And one virgin queen will finally fight the others and win, and it'll just be one queen in the hive. And some brood here. We have a greater chance of seeing our queen when we start getting into brood like this. You just have to literally stare down almost every bee to be sure you're not missing your queen. And when you're looking for the queen, by the way, you can look on the face of the, of the comb like this, but don't forget to look on the bottom edge like that. She could be definitely down there walking around. I worked a hive a while back and I showed you guys, you know, what do you do when you have a very hot hive? And I considered that hive to be hot because there were a lot of them on my hat and veil. As soon as I made a fast movement, there was 10 or 20, 30 bees on the fast moving of my smoker. I made that video. A lot of you said, oh my gosh, that's not a hot hive at all. Well, this is the kind of hive I'm used to. Normally I wouldn't wear gloves because they're so gentle, but I'm wearing gloves today because we have a lot of frames to look at. And it keeps my hands from getting so propolized too. Again, big drone, horizontal, not vertical, drone cells. Not worried about them. Not seeing a queen anywhere. Bee bread. Likely not to find the queen sitting on a frame of bee bread. And the next frame is nothing but capped over honey. So we're going to put these frames back in position. And as we do, we're going to look at them again. It's not going to take that much time to give them a glance over. Now, I want to show you guys something that's maybe new to you. But there is a metal rail in here along the frame rest area that is adjusted to only hold nine frames in a gap. So it has a cutout gap for each frame. I kind of like that because it keeps these super separated. I wouldn't really use it in a deep because if you do, you reduce the amount of uh, brood you could have. But in a case like this, in a super, it does help the supers be drawn out a little wider. And it's easier to handle the frames because they're not smack dab against each other. Leave a comment below if you use the phrase smack dab. During the live stream, we actually looked at the bottom deep frames and they were kind of filled up with a lot of resources like this one is. You're just not going to find the queen there unless she's just bored to death and got lost and decided to walk around and take a break. Okay, so we did not see the queen in our super. So what we need to do is put this super somewhere and bring the second deep in here. So we just need to temporarily park this super on a bottom board with a lid on it. Do I have anything like that? Start looking for resources. Yep, I got a bottom board, I got a hive stand, I got a top cover. All right, we'll make that happen. Okay, we're gonna put the super uh, temporarily on this bottom board. We're gonna put a top on it so we can look at the next deep on the same table. We're pretty confident that the queen is not in this top super. Okay, so let's take our top cover off because we're gonna put it right back on the bottom deep once we get the top deep off. So that we think the queen could be in here. Now we're gonna separate the two sections. For all of you Star Trek fans, we're gonna separate the saucer section. We're gonna take this top deep back to the operating table and look for the queen. Let's get her done. <clears throat> it's heavier than the super. It's in place. Top cover is on. We'll let the bees settle down a minute. They got a little more involved there. Some of you may be asking, well, isn't there a lot more bees? Uh, a lot less room for the bees. Yeah. 
Um, but they were able to come outside a little bit, as you can see here on the front. Plus, we did take half of the colony away, half of the bees away. So, all right, let's give them a little bit of smoke. They're pretty calm, pretty laid back today. All the bees are in the hive today because of the rain and the storms. So we have a lot more bees to deal with. My camera said the card was full, so I had to change the battery and I had to go out in the rain and put a new memory card in. Something that you don't have to do if you're not filming your inspections. Okay, not seeing the queen. Not seeing the queen really up in the corners either. I see some drones, big drones everywhere, but no queens. No queens, so let's look back over here. Sometimes a queen will just rotate around. Start scanning with your eyes on the outside edges of the frame and either go clockwise or counterclockwise and work your way back toward the center of the frame. That way you can catch the queen if she's on the outside edge before she leaves. And as you work your way around and start looking at the center, if she's there, that's where you're going to focus on. And then do the opposite. Work your way out of the center, clockwise or counterclockwise, back until you're looking at the outside edges of the frame. Nothing obvious for me there. Let's rotate it around to the other side. Some people say a hive inspection, you know, it shouldn't take a long time. <coughs> but when you do it like this, we really don't have the hive open as long per se because we've got these boxes. I've got the super covered, so it's its own little box hive over there. And I've got my bottom deep covered, it's its own little box here. So really the only thing we have open right now is just this deep box, not the whole hive. So the whole hive can kind of carry on even though they're a little bit separated. All right, so let's see if we see the queen here. Aha! I see the queen. Does anybody else see the queen? Oh, it's a beautiful day. We found the queen. We found the queen. So what we're going to do now is we're going to mark her, cage her, and put the hive back together. Let's get to work. Now I want to show you what I did. I actually put my queen, the frame that she was on, down here in this empty deep to come find her. We'll work on her later. All right, so what we're going to attempt to do today is make a five frame nucleus from the hive here and then put five more frames of undrawn foundation back in here and see if that will help uh, calm down this colony. Okay, here we have, again, um, larvae, nectar, bees. Not bad. I'm going to do that. All right, now I just want to get a couple of frames of resources, although it could help to get some, some more brood out of here. Let's try that. Hey, Kathy, I, uh, can I call you back? I've got a hive open and I've got a lot of bees everywhere. Um, I'll call you back probably in about an hour. Don't want to take that one. That's too much brood. I need some food for my five frame nucleus. Oh yeah, it's heavy. Okay, got a good frame of brood. Let's just go ahead. We're going to put the brood toward the other brood, but the honey on the outside. So let's do it like this. Now, that's enough frames that are active. So in other words, we need two frames now that are not, uh, really don't have anything on them. All right, so here's a, a frame that's drawn out with nothing on it. Let's go ahead and put that in there. I give them room to, to work. Let's see if we can find one more. All right, I do have one more. So let's go ahead and put this other one in here. All right, so that's a five frame nucleus. I've got them closed off in the front. This is the lid that I created that uses tension to go down and stay in place on a, on a nuke like this, just like that. All right, 
So I get the vent open down there and I'm going to move this to my new apiary yard down there. So let's go ahead and put it back on the back of the golf cart now. Now there's a lot of things we can do right now. And I know a lot of you are going to be leaving comments like I would have done this. I would have made that into that. That's the thing about beekeeping. A lot of different options. It depends on what time of the year you're doing this. And it depends on what you want to do. Like do you want to um, have more honey? Do you want to have more bees? Um, if you're selling five frame nukes, you can make a whole bunch of nukes out of this. Start raising some queens. Use these um, extra bees for mating nooks. So this depends on what you want to do. But if you're a backyard beekeeper, uh, probably the easiest thing to do is to make a split, walk away split. Walk away with some bees, like maybe walk away with the one deep and leave the other deep behind to, you know, make another uh, hive, raise their own queen, so forth. All right. It is thundering and boring down raining. <laughs> I could not do this if I didn't have this building right here with an, a large opening at the end of it. This really allows me to do a little work on a rainy day, like in the event that they were ready to swarm. They can swarm any minute, so I'm glad we came out here when we did. It is true that bees normally swarm after a rainy season or a little stormy season and it clears off, the weather gets really good. All at once, that's when you see bees really wanting to swarm. After a night of bad weather, the next day it'll be beautiful, blue sky, and away goes the bees up in the trees. So we're getting a little bit ahead of the game here. That's good. All right, we got mostly resources on these. Let me check. I don't know if you can hear that rain. I got my uh, microphone wind, what's called a um, dead cat windscreen on, but it is boring. But I thought all of this through. That's the thing about beekeeping. You got to think things through. Like you got to say to yourself, I need to work this hive to keep them from swarming but it's gonna storm, what do I do? Now you might be asking me, David, what is this method you're using? What are you doing? How do you know where to put the empty combs? Um, tell us what you're doing here. Okay, fair enough. I, I added four brand new frames that have not been drawn out. That will require the bees to start making wax at a it will actually require a lot of energy for the bees to build that wax. They want to do it. They're charging them, themselves up. The 11, to, the 11 to 17 day old bees are charging up with nectar so they can build a comb when they swarm, build a comb in their new location. So I know they have it in them to build my frames out. So by giving them these four empty frames scattered throughout the hive deep, they're going to be more apt to use that uh, nectar that they have digested to build wax on this, 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 and this. I put one against the wall, but I actually put three closer to the center. To rush them to do that, they want that filled up. So, so now I have, um, this hive is going to be queenless. They have queen cells. But I'm hoping to deter them with these frames that need to be drawn out. This is going to go on the top of the deep that's out in the rain right now. And uh, I'm going to open it up here in just a second. I'm going to check the radar. But I want to put this hive all back together. So what I want to do is put the deep on this super above them like this. Look at that. I'm not going to put a queen excluder on. Why? Do they have, do they have a laying queen? Absolutely not. How long will it be until they have a laying queen? 30 days. All right, so my plan now is to go out in the rain, take the top off briefly of the bottom deep, and add their top deep and this super, and then I'm going to add their other super on top of this. Now this goes against what I always say is I think we should always uh, top super, but the reason I'm able to bottom super 
is because they're queenless. I got 30 days, maybe 21 to 30 days before queen is going to get raised and mated to get up here. So in about 14 to 15 days, I could reverse my boxes, my supers, and put my other super there on the bottom and this super back on top. So I'm just trying to get this drawn out faster by getting it closer to where the bees are. All right, so now we're going to play in the rain. Wow. A crazy day, isn't it? Again, beekeepers need to know if you wait on the weather, you'll never get anything done. It really doesn't hurt the bees to get a little wet. I'm not going to have the top off that long. They could possibly be a little more irritable while we do this, but we're going to be pretty fast about it. Come on, baby, lock, lock in place. Okay. Now we need to put our honey super on. Oh, I forgot how heavy this was. It's very heavy. Let's get this in position. Now let's put our lid back on. This is the wrong lid. And here's the right lid. All right. Whew. Okay, so we're not done yet. Now we need to deal with our queen. I'd like to mark her, and then I've decided to go ahead and release her in that five-frame nuke over there. So let's go ahead and get her up on the table, and, and let's mark a queen. Oh, let me show you how hard it's raining. Look at that. It is pouring down rain. Rain, rain, rain. After we get the queen marked and in, a, in that nuke, we're going to take this frame and add it to one of our newly installed splits or packages down there in the rain. Give them a little bit of a boost. I'm going to lay my hive tool down to catch the frame so the bees don't get smashed. All right, we're going to let them just sit there for a second. Okay, so what I'm looking for now is I know the queen is on this frame. Now, she may not be on this side. So I'm trusting that she is. So we're going to just start scanning to see if we can find the queen. And then we'll prepare to mark her. Okay, she's right up here. Let me see if I can pick her up. She's trying to go to the other side. Let me discourage that, drive her back down. All right, I'd like to pick her up with my right hand. She's right in the middle here. A lot of you saw um, how much brood I had in the colony, but she is not the biggest queen I've ever seen. So, not that big. Trying to handle her very carefully. And I like to hold her by the two back legs, so. I've got the I've got the two back legs that I'm holding now. So now we're just going to take our marking pin here and put a red dot right on the thorax. Okay, good enough. We're going to hold her just for a little bit, and then we've got to take her and put her in that nucleus over there, the five-frame nucleus. So I'm going to hold her uh, by her back wings. I'm going to hold her by the wings like that, and I'm not going to take my camera outside because it's raining, but I'm going to go over there and drop her in that nuke. I'll be right back. Okay, good. I got, I got her carried over 
to the five frame nucleus. That's great. Because we're going to raise some queens off of her and do some grafting. So we just want to go ahead and confine her now, manipulate her location so we don't have to worry to find her again. All right, this frame is going to go downstream into another hive that's developing to give them a little boost down there. All right, well, I uh, got the job done and it is pouring down raining. I am totally soaked, but I got my nuke established. I got that one frame in a, a little hive that I think I started from a package and uh, I've never been more wet than all my born days. Look at that field, how much water is standing in the field. I did all that bee work in the rain, by the way. Look at that, I'm doing all this work making this video while it's raining this hard. Look at that, right in front of the hive. Water is standing everywhere. Crazy. There you go, guys. That's how you get something done. That's what you call a cowboy up. And uh, we saved the day. We got that uh, queen out of there. And we put her in a five frame nucleus. We did some uh, almost like checkerboarding. We kind of moved some frames around. Hopefully curtail the swarm in that nice colony that we did a live stream on. But I'm ready to go inside and get dried off and get something to eat. Thanks so much for watching. If you'd like to watch what you should be doing in the month of May, look right over here. I got great tips for the month of May. See you over there.